LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, lift off conditions looking pretty good. ESTS is ready for launch. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten, nine, eight. Side booster ignition. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Stage one tank pressing for flight. T minus fifteen seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Attention. And we have lift off. Plus 40 seconds into liftoff. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, carrying our Starlink payload out into space. Now, we just throttled down the engines in preparation for Max Q, which stands for Maximum Aerodynamic Pressure. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle will see throughout ascent. Should be coming up on Max Q in a few seconds here. Max Q. And there's that call out that we just passed through Max Q. In about a minute, we will have three events that happen very quickly one after another. That will be MECO or main engine cutoff, stage separation, and SES 1 or second engine start 1. And main engine cutoff is where all nine of those M1D engines shut down to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation, which is when the first stage separates from the second stage. After stage separation is SES-1 or second engine start one. And this is where the MVAC engine lights up for its first burn and propels the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. And at T plus two minutes, we are about 30 seconds away from those three events. Again, that's MECO, stage separation, and SES-1. Again, it's SES-1 because we do have two burns of the Merlin vacuum engine on today's mission. We have a beautiful view of the first stage. Stage separation confirmed. And there you just watched Miko, main engine cutoff, stage separation, and that second stage engine ignite. We're just about 15 seconds here from fairing deploy, and on your right-hand screen, you can see a view of inside of those fairing halves, looking at the Starlink payload as well. And on your left-hand screen is first stage, making its way back to Earth. Fairing separation confirmed. And there, as you watch on your screen, that is confirmation that those fairing halves have deployed. And as a reminder, we will be attempting to pick up the fairing halves after they touch down on the water with our recovery vessel, Miss Chief, today.
Now with stage two well on its way to orbit, stage one is now heading back to Earth and will perform two burns on its way down. Acquisition of signal Bermuda. The first is the entry burn to assist in slowing the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. This will be a three engine burn starting off with the center E9 engine and followed not too long after by two additional engines reigniting. Then the second and final burn for the first stage will be the landing burn, which is just a single E9 engine. And that is enough to rapidly slow down the vehicle to allow it to touch down on its landing zone. And again, for today, the landing zone is just read the instructions, which is currently out in the middle of the ocean waiting for this booster to come back. Stage two is looking good and nominal got a nice view of that MVAC engine on your right hand screen. Stage two is taking our Starlink payload to its targeted orbit and these 60 Starlink satellites will join the constellation already on orbit which is which are designed to provide high speed low latency internet to people here on Earth and especially to places where good internet is really hard to access. It's just after T plus five minutes so we're just about a minute away from the entry burn beginning on the first stage. Entry burn will be. Trajectory. And there's a call out. The vehicle uh, second stage is on nominal trajectory. That entry burn will last about 22 seconds long. And you can see on your left hand screen the first stage, the grid fins are deployed. Uh, but they actually don't start steering until after entry burn. That's because it requires the atmosphere and air to be flowing through those grid fins. Got some really awesome clear views on both the, both the first and second stage. You can see Earth in the background. just about 15 seconds or so away from that entry burn on the first stage. Stage one FTS is saved. Stage one entry burn zero. And there you can see the entry burn has begun. And as you saw, the plume started out small and then got larger, and that's because we light up the first single engine and then followed by two additional engines on this entry burn for a total of three. Stage one entry burn shut down. And entry burn is now complete as you see those engines have shut down. So next up in about a minute or so will be that landing burn for the first stage. And as I mentioned earlier, it will just be the center. All nominal trajectories. It will just be the center E9 engine for the landing burn, and that's enough thrust to slow the vehicle down. The M1D engines have 845 kilonewtons, or 190,000 pounds of thrust. Again, that's enough to slow this very large vehicle down to touch down on that drone ship that you see right there in front of you. That's just read the instructions. And this will be the third landing for this specific booster. About 20 seconds or so away from that landing burn beginning. It was a very clear and beautiful day over there in Florida. So hopefully we get a nice, beautiful view of first stage landing. Stage one landing burn. There's confirmation, stage one landing burn. You can kind of see that burn kind of shaking the camera there. Stage one landing leg deploy. Seco. Stage one landing. <laughs> and we had a little bit of a rough camera view there, but the Falcon has landed on our drone ship for its third landing on Just Read the Instructions. This marks our 63rd successful recovery of a Falcon first stage and the 11th for Just Read the Instructions. 
and looks amazing as we can see it there now standing stably there. So lost the signal, Kate. And now we're waiting on your right hand screen for Seco 1, which is second engine cutoff 1. Seco. There's that call out for Seco. We're waiting for confirmation of good orbit here. Nominal parking orbit insertion. And there is that call out that we are in a good orbit. So now the second stage is going to coast in this orbit for roughly 35 minutes. So we're going to take a quick break during this coasting time, but we'll leave you with an, an animation so that you can see where the Starlink satellites are in the coast phase. So we'll see you back here at T plus 43 minutes for the second engine, second stage engine relight. Oh, there it is. And there you, you saw on your screen um, that SES-2 and SECO-2 happen very quickly. You can actually see the peak of the Starlink sunlight. Deployed, confirmed. And there you could see on your screen, the stack of 60 Starlink satellites have successfully deployed from second stage. And what an awesome view with the sunlight hitting those Starlink satellites. And right there, we just watched the final deployment for SpaceX's 100th successful mission. How exciting and what an incredible milestone to reach. What an awesome view as well. The Starlink satellites will soon deploy their single solar array, and over the course of a few weeks, they will distance themselves from each other and use their onboard ion thrusters powered by Krypton to make their way to their operational orbit. And that brings our webcast to a close. As a reminder, today's launch marks SpaceX's 100th successful flight of a Falcon rocket since Falcon 1 first flew to orbit in 2008. To date, SpaceX has landed Falcon's first stage rocket booster 63 times and reflown boosters 45 times. To all of our supporters, customers, and most importantly, employees of SpaceX, thank you for your dedication in getting the company to this milestone. Thank you as well to the Range and the FAA for supporting today's mission. If you're interested in getting future information about our Starlink service, please visit Starlink.com and sign up for updates. Thank you and have a great day.